Well, hello, my name's Neil Avancha, and this is... My name's Maitreya Bandhu. And we're here at uh, Vajrasana Retreat Centre in Suffolk, England. Yeah, and we live at the London Buddhist Centre. In fact, we live in a community above the London Buddhist Centre. And we're just here on a, on a retreat. We're on a retreat here together, yeah. So we thought we'd do this film from there. We want to talk about the guideline, which is about uh, a grasp of the Dharma as taught by Bhante Sangrachita. Yeah. So, um, do you want to start off, Maitre Bhante, and say a little bit about what Bhante's presentation of the Dharma means to you, and what it's meant when you first came along? Yes, well, I mean, the, the first time I saw Bhante give a talk, um, when I was about 25, I'm nearly 60 now. Yeah. <laughs> um, actually, I was rather underwhelmed, to be honest. Mm. Um, he seemed to me to be like a benign mm. uh, junior school headmaster. You were an art student. I was an art student. and I Probably wanted... always underwhelmed. <laughs> I, I was sort Studiously of, underwhelmed. Yeah, yeah, you know, that, was, that, was, that was part of the thing. You, know, you had to be underwhelmed. Um, so I don't, don't remember even what talk it was. And then you know, later on I became a Mitra quite quickly and I um, did the Mitra study course. Actually, in the room I currently live in, um, used to go up every day, every week to the Mitra study course for three or four years. Mm. And you know, the dwindling numbers, mm. that's what happened. Mm. And again, I don't remember <laughs> very often being massively inspired. Mm. But um, what I do remember, and we, we will get to the world. <laughs> no, no, you're in time. <laughs> what I do remember, what I do <laughs> know very strongly is, particularly after ordination, mm. I realised how deeply I, my understanding of the Dharma had come from that Mitra study course. Right. You know, I'd done three, four years of study. Every week I'd always listened to the lectures. I'd always taken careful notes. Yeah. Uh, I'd gone on, after I got ordained, I went on um, uh, retreats for Mitra study leaders. Yes. And doing that study is created this incredible understanding, deep yeah. understanding of the Dharma. Yeah. And then my other key experience, I think, is when I first studied the survey mm. um, at Pamaloka, mm. when I asked for ordination. Mm. I'd never read anything like it. It's not that I'm a sort of philosophical type or anything like that. Mm. But I was completely, well, it was a revelation to me reading the survey. Mm. Um, I wanted to run around Pamaloka with it above my head, like they do in mm. the cup in the football. Um, I, it, was, it really was a full out revelation. Mm. Um, I experienced my mind just being stretched in all directions across space, through time, mm. through different lifetimes. Mm. Mm. Um, this uh, Bhante just unfolding this sort of ma majestic vision of the Buddha. Mm. Uh, mm. So that was an experience of being in, in very strong mm. uh, inspiration. Mm. But the main thing for me is that just a, 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 you know, a deep, integral understanding of the Dharma through studying Bhante right from the very beginning. Mm. Mm. Yeah, no, it's so interesting. I remember my experience of reading the survey, of chapter one of the survey for the first time. I was on a solitary retreat, my first solitary retreat. So of course that was a big sort of strong experience, mm. just being on solitary retreat for two years. It was in Rivendell. Yeah. It was in Rivendell, yeah, yeah. that's right. Uh, and I read chapter one of the survey and took, like you, took really detailed notes and uh, uh, was blown away by it. I, I'd been looking for something in Buddhism that was a I don't know, a response to death, a response to life and death. Mm. And here was this incredibly majestic vision that was completely traditional, but also, uh, um, I was going to say accessible. The survey is not exactly accessible in that it's easy to read, but it was speaking to uh, me mm. uh, completely with my concerns. It wasn't just reading an archaic Tibetan no, no. Uh, no. Buddhist text or... or it was speaking to a modern mind, yeah. a modern... Uh, uh, I was reading um, Brian McGee's book on Schopenhauer at the same time, mm -hmm. and um, it felt like there was Schopenhauer's mind and there was Bante's mind, and they were, they were both exploring the nature of reality from different angles, coming up with, I don't know, parallel insights that you mm -hmm. could... It was exhilarating, mm -hmm. exhilarating. I was also thinking about Mitra study. I don't, I, I don't really remember. Well, I taught your Mitra study for yeah, only for one year. Only for one year. You taught it for one year, and that was a good year. Yeah, that was great. That was a great year. Um, actually, the Mitra course has improved a lot. It's yes, amazing. Yeah. I came away from four years of Mitra study, or three years it was at the time. Mm. And in retrospect, I got an overview, but I didn't at the time know quite what I'd got. 
it was it yeah. felt quite piecemeal with yeah, a, a little yeah, bit yeah. of the sutra gold light, a little yeah. bit of Pali Canon there. Whereas I think now the Mitra Cooks course is much more coherent. Yes, yes. Particularly with that foundation. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I think I think that's that's you know really s sort of um, brought things into context yes. much 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 more. I've done Mitra Sodhi several times since. Yeah, uh, yeah. I think it's an excellent foundation, mm. a really excellent foundation. <coughs> but I was also thinking about the survey. Mm. What am I thinking? Well, I think as the years have gone on, I think I've appreciated that even more. Mm. That and, and the three jewels, particularly Bhante's mm. Dharma section of the three jewels, mm. and the Buddha section particularly. And one of the things I've realised is what a genius Bhante has been spiritual genius in emphasizing the spiral path, yes. in emphasizing positive conditionality, not just conditionality as something to, um, I don't know, escape from, yeah, you know, right. uh, the wheel of life as something to just get on, mm. but positive conditionality as a, as a path in its own positive path of growth, of development, mm. of uh, uh, generosity and love and friendship and beauty and creativity. Mm. Uh, for me that, um, I don't know without that vision, I don't know if I would have stuck with Buddhism. Mm. If it had just been about becoming, I don't know, giving up craving more and more, or even becoming more and more mindful, yeah. that wouldn't have been enough for me. So your Bhante vision takes in the whole of you, it feels like. Yeah. There's, there, there's a sort of space for the whole of you. Um, mm. And of course, it gives you a path of practice. Mm. I think so many people. What we what people need is not just wonderful vision, but they need an actual practical path mm. with stages on that path, mm. with mm. practices on that path, mm. with friends who are on that path mm. with them. Mm. Um, mm. And Bhante's system of practice gives you that. Mm. Um, mm. I think we've clarified that again over the years. Because when it was first introduced, it was as a system of meditation, yeah, wasn't it, right, with yeah. meditation practices. Yeah. But actually, it's we now understand it as a system of the Dharma life, yeah. of everything. Well, I think Bhante is taught very much from inspiration. Mm. And we've had to sort of, well, not had to, but we've gradually realised how all those inspirations fit together into, mm. A, mm. into a coherent mm. path, mm. Um, mm. a human path that goes deeper and deeper into the human mm. to discover enlightenment. It's interesting that what you say about the humanness of it, because for me, I've been interested in Buddhism since my teens, mm. uh, and I'd read a few popular books. Had a brush Zen. I had a brush with Zen. <laughs> <laughs> Zen's fine. I, I didn't come off so well. Um, and um, I don't think I would have, although I thought of myself as a Buddhist, I haven't really done any, I haven't really practiced, and I don't think I could have done without coming across a Sangha. Yeah. Without us, I mean, I came across you, for example. You and Bhakti Dharani led my first retreat. Mm. Uh, I didn't speak to you. I was too sort of uh, uh, shy and frightened to speak to you or Bhakti Dharani at the time. Um, but what you've shown me and others have shown me is uh, what Sangha means. And yeah. I think that that, for me, brings alive these teachings in a way that otherwise they'd remain interesting, but perhaps... For me, they might have remained academic yeah. interests. Yeah. Uh, Bhante has given us a world, hasn't he? Yeah. He's given us a whole cosmos. In a, world. a world to, to live and move in and act in, not just yeah. some good books, yeah. uh, you know, but a whole yeah. vision of yeah. what it means to be a Buddhist yeah. now. Yeah. And this notion that it never ends. I yeah. mean, that enlightenment isn't a static point yeah. that you arrive at and then you just put your feet up and, I don't know, you've... you've um, eliminated dukkha from your life, yeah, yeah. Uh, but that's it. Again, that wouldn't, for me, be inspiring enough, mm. this uh, unfolding, ceaseless creativity, but then, well, Bhante's emphasis on then that acting in the world uh, yeah. means that it's a, I don't know, it's an unending adventure. Mm. Uh, yeah. Mm. Should we leave it there? Yeah. Well, thank you very much, Matthew.